Since so it's up and starting the stream. Are we monetizing it? Mm -hmm. yep. There it is. Oh, I so could have said something right here. Go right over here. Is that the text? Yeah, but we don't have time. So. All right. Since you're live, so. Am I live now? I think so. I am. All right, guys. This is my first time trying this. So, I don't know. Hopefully, it's going good. So, 2019 Bassmasters Classic is right before us. And I think they uh, start this coming Friday. And they're going to be faced with some good, tough conditions. But we're far enough along in the year that these bass, they're going to be biting. So, right off the giddy, are they going to catch a lot of fish in this tournament? I'm going to say yeah. yeah it, it's going to be a good tournament. You can't come in the mid mid-March time of the year and not be able to catch them. So the topic of today, what are going to be some of my top choices that I think are going to win the Classic? We're going to go through every angler uh, today. Uh, it's, we're going to discuss strengths and weaknesses. We're going to talk about the Classic. We're going to talk about my thoughts on the Classic, uh, you know, a little bit talking about the split, about anglers being split between MLF, you got Bassmasters, you got FLW. So if you guys are just joining us, uh, new to this channel, uh, we got a lot of content. Just take a little time, surf. I, I do a lot of instructional videos. I do some fun videos with pros finding lures. I do a lot of hacks. I don't know. I just do a lot of things. I'm like a, I'm like a whirlwind when it comes to what I actually do. But most of it's centered around uh, fishing and. Hope you guys enjoy the content, and you, and for all of you guys that have joined me and have subscribed already, I, I really do appreciate it, guys. We've grown, uh, we've grown about ten thousand subscribers in about five and a half months, and that's a that's a that's impressive to know that ten thousand of you guys are saying, "Hey, I'm willing to invest my time in you, and I'm investing my time for you." So. It's a win-win for both of us. We're both uh, gaining something from it, and I really do appreciate it. So what we're about to do is, yes, we're going to go to the Bassmaster website, and they pretty much have people in alphabetical order. So, of course, we're going to start off with Casey Ashley, and my son here is showing me the live chat, and uh, just, just tell me some of the questions that come through there. I mean, it, it, it don't matter. So right off the giddy, we're going to go with a, a, a you know a former classic champion, K Casey Ashley. What are my Casey? Uh, what is it? Oh, Jeff Holland just did a twenty. Jeff, I appreciate it. Jeff just throwed down twenty dollars, and I'm sure that's towards the five lure challenge. Jeff, that means a lot to us on the channel. So Casey Ashley is uh he's a winner guys it, 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 he's won in the past um my thoughts on him on this coming up classic he's got a classic win up underneath his belt do i think he's going to to uh be a contender right off the giddy we got 40 something anglers to go he's the ashley with a i'm gonna give him I'm going to give him props. I'm going to think he's going to be a contender. And at the end of this video, I'm probably going to go through and tell you who's going to be top 10. Why do I think Casey is going to be a top contender is he's a guy who's willing to make an adjustment. And he, he's afraid to go from whatever it may be, skipping docks to cranking, whatever it may be. Casey's a, he's a pretty smart fisherman. Uh, I look for him to do very well. All right, now we're going on to Adrian Avina. Adrian Avina, this is his first year, guys. This is the first year at the Classic. He's He's been out on the professional scene for quite a few years now. He started on the FLW Tour. Adrian, uh, I'm going to have to put a little bit of rookiness, rookiness nerves coming into this one. I don't look for him to be in the top five, but I look for him to be you know, up there. I look for him to be, you know, somewhere in the in the middle of the pack. Adrian, don't don't be hating on me. 
I love you, my man. He did an awesome job on on Five Lure Challenge. Let's see. We got we got Drew Benton here. Drew is a phenomenal fisherman when it comes to sight fishermen, shallow water uh, style of fisherman. This could be in his wheelhouse, uh, but he tends to fare a little bit better on clear water fisheries. So this week, Drew, you're not going to be in my top top pick right now. All right, Josh Bertrand. Okay, this guy's new on the scene. He's he was actually almost won Angler of the Year. He finished second last uh, this this previous year. Look, what does that mean? Reconnection successful. OBS Studio. All right, you might be on. Keep going. All right, all right, Jason Christie. All right, Jason Christie, a freaking beast, a beast. And this tournament, I'm going to explain to you a little bit of what's happening. At it, Basically, you got two lakes. This is going to be a spinnerbait chunking lake. Chatterbait, bladed bait, something like that. This is going to be a spinnerbait, uh, you know, place. Jason, you, if you don't have him in, in, in your top picks, you're just crazy. My man has got the ment ment mentalness. To take big events, he's got the mentality for a win. Uh, if you don't know Jason, follow him. He is definitely is going to be in my top pick. We all know Jason is a phenomenal fisherman. All right, so now we got Mark Daniels Jr. Mark Daniels Jr. has dude. This dude has come on the scene, and what I love about Mark is he's hungry. Mark is flat out hungry to to come away with wins, just to make a career out of this. He's soaking up anything. He wants to learn anything. He's humble. He's an awesome dude. Uh, and he's he's pretty strong on the cranking world. I, I think in this tournament we're going to have two two factors that I'm leaning towards, the spinnerbait chunkers and the, and the spinnerbait and bladed jig chunkers and the uh, uh, crankers. I think that's going to play – huge role this week and he's a good cranker i'm not going to put him up there at the top uh of my picks but he's he's up there near the top i can tell you that so he's going to have a strong finish for sure oh gosh ot defoe my man ot defoe you <laughs> okay good what's that song what's that song with the shape of an l on you he is not going to have the shape of an l on his forehead He's probably going to have the shape of a W on his forehead. And the reason is, right in his backyard, his wheelhouse. Uh, let me see. I don't even know if he's won. He was ranked fourth last year. Just any anything around his home waters, my boy knows it, knows it well. And, you know, he's going to be probably in my top three. I'll let you know here shortly once we get through here. Odd Defoe, you... You know he's going to be tough to, to defend. Who we got here? Kyle Dorsett uh, qualified through Bass Nation. Kyle, know nothing about you, but congrats on getting to the Classic. I wish I could talk about you more, but let's see you come through and be the first one in history to win it through the Bass Nation. Sorry, Kyle, can't throw you no love, but I'm throwing you love for making the Classic. Oh, gosh. We got the Flat Bremen, California, whatever you call them, little shoes he wears. All right. We all know my boy is a phenomenal fisherman, Brent Ayler. As you can see, the Flat Bremen. He's getting. He's just a California. He, he's like a California model right here. But uh, definitely, is he going to be a strong contender? Eh, not so sure. His strength is getting in areas and working them over. He he excels in clean clear water. Um, these waters are pretty muddy from you know from on both lakes that they're going to be fishing that are connected. Is he going to do good? Absolutely, he'll he'll do good. But I don't look for him to come away with the win just simply simply because clear water is typically in his wheelhouse and. Although he has become uh, bladed bait strong lately, I've been seeing him throw that bladed bait. Him and Brett Height are good buddies, and 
he has been a chatterbait fanatic, you know, here lately. So don't look for a win. Phenomenal fisherman, but I don't look for him to be at the top. Next, oh gosh. Don't know much about him, okay, James Elam, but I've been able to watch him some on Bassmaster Live. He's done he's done very well uh, the last few years. Uh, seems to be a very strong angler and a versatile angler. Uh, <clears throat> I, you know, coming from Oklahoma, you know, he, he might be a wild horse for me, guys. I, you know, talk, just thinking about James, those Oklahoma guys come from places that have a lot of rock, you know, mountainous reservoirs, which are going to be similar. They're used to cranking. They're used to shallow water, square billing, spinner baiting. They're dealt with high and muddy water. So, James, I'm going to put you up there. You gonna, you gonna, I'm going to throw you some love up in there. So, James, you, you like, oh, gosh. We got two Oklahoma boys coming up in here. 17. He's already got a classic win. Uh, Edwin is, he's got the mentality to be strong. He's a strong competitor. You know, I'd be a fool not to have Edwin in some of my top picks. Uh, you know, if you don't know Edwin, you don't follow him, he's going to be a strong contender for sure. Absolutely. Uh, and if you guys are, are, are chiming in, as many comments come through there, Mason, you guys, you guys go ahead and chime in if if you if you're watching me live. My son's sitting here watching the comments, so uh, they can definitely come in live. Uh, we already had one guy donate uh, twenty dollars, and Jeff Holland actually has a a channel out there if you guys want to understand grass okay and you want to understand what grasses grow in different types of bots so he actually has a youtube channel out and he threw us some love i'm gonna throw him some love he donated twenty dollars to the to the channel and his channel is phenomenal if you want to learn about so you guys fire away with some questions next up is todd faircloth all right todd 16 classic appearances. He was ranked 15th last year. Todd is, is one of those consistently uh, good anglers. Um, he's got some wins up underneath his belt. And if I was to think about most of his wins, most of his wins came one. He's got a win on St. Clair where he figured out one area. He had a win down in Louisiana somewhere, figured out one area. This is not going to be a tournament where one area is going to dominate, I don't think. So, Todd is a phenomenal fisherman. It breaks my heart not to throw him some love on this one. But, you know, Todd will do well. But, I, you know, part of me doesn't think that this is going to be an area-specific uh, body of water to win this classic right now next week. So, oh, good gosh. We got Seth Fighter, the thickest mustache I've ever seen in my life and the thinnest hair, long hair I've ever seen in my life. Seth Fighter, ranked 18th, uh, classic history, one classic appearance. Uh, when he first came on the scene, I, I don't think he was as strong as he's been the last few years. Uh, he has developed into a very good angler here recently. And when I say recently, the last couple of years. So Seth is definitely a guy that that will make a strong strong uh, presence here. I don't think uh, he could come away with a win. And and again, guys, if I'm saying you're not, if you're watching this, I'm saying you're not going to come away with a win. It's not because I don't love you. I just I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong. I love I love all you guys. So it's weird talking about you guys, but I, I do. So next we got. Michael, oh, here, here's a guy. All right. I know him. I've got to hang around with him a little bit. And my boy has always done well in spring. So, Michael Frazier, I look for him to come away. He's going to, he's phenomenal with like shad wraps, shallow cranking. He's had some great finishes. Makai Frazier, you're going to be one of my top picks for sure. Uh, no, Jacopo Gallo, oh gosh, he's probably going to get, he's from Italy, 
first appearance, don't know nothing about you, except you're from Italy and you've made it through the Bass Nation, congrats. I wish I could talk about you more, but I don't know any stats. Roy Hawk, all right, here we go, another California boy, Arizona, uh, great fisherman. Um, you know, I know a lot of those California boys can be very versatile. I look for Roy to have a strong finish, but maybe not some of my top picks. Here we go, Brett Height. <sighs> Brett Height, of course, we all know him for the bladed jig. He has won a lot of money. We we kind of look at Brett Height. The bladed jig is definitely going to be throwing a big um, factor in place, but I don't think right now, I, I don't think he has what it takes to come away with a win uh, just because he's kind of dominated with the chatter bait. I think it's going to take a mixture of spinner bait or bladed bait and crank bait. I, who knows? Brett, I know you're going to do a strong finish. Maybe not as strong as we got. We got Derek Huddall. No, not about you, Derek. You look like a cool dude. I hope you be the first one to win uh, through another division, but that's about all the love I can throw you. Nothing against you, just don't know you. Oh, me. Never give up. Uh-oh, it's not loaded. Mike Iconelli. We got 21. There he is. Mike Iconelli. Alright. I want to throw this guy up in the top of the mix. Uh, he's very good at running patterns. Uh, whether you love him or hate him, uh, I actually just put a five fish catching five out about him. And uh, look, uh, catching five fish. What am I talking about? Uh, pros finding five lures just did a great job on that. And actually, his charity of choice was pretty cool. He's big on autism. So, my man is very good at patterns. Very good. He picks up. He's, a, he's an instinctual fisherman. So, whether you love him or hate him, Ike, I'm throwing you up in the top of the mix. He likes to do cranking. He just, he enjoys it. And, seems like my pictures aren't loading up. Alright, so we got Alton Jones Jr. You can see it right here. Out one classic appearance, qualified, ranked 22nd. Here we go. Uh, young fisherman, grew up with Alton. His dad is actually Alton Jones. And, you know, you, it's so cool to see somebody come from a kid and develop into where he's actually fishing a classic. Uh, still think he's a little too young uh, mentally to come away with the win. I hope you prove me wrong, Junior. But uh, no, no, you'll do good. Bobby Lane. All right, so Bobby was ranked 11th last year. Bobby is is an area fisherman. When I say that, I mean Bobby is, he likes to get in an area, pick it apart, and he can pick apart areas better than anybody, not anybody, but better than a lot of other anglers. He can get in there and dissect and understand what's happening in areas. Bobby is going to be a, a good contender, but I don't think this is going to be an area tournament. I think this is going to be fly by the seat of your pants tournament, running around, bumping around, moving around, moving in areas. So, uh, you know, Bobby, I'm sure you're going to do well. I hope I hope all you guys prove, prove me wrong. Here we go. Any questions come through there yet? What you read them to me? Oh, gosh. You guys are firing away. Uh, <laughs> James says, what's up with those flat brim hats? Yeah. Uh, the Mullocks. Uh, somebody's talking about Mullocks is going to play. Well, we going, we getting ready to get to Wesley Schrader for sure. Good morning. Oh, yeah, Namath 802. You're always up there. Jesse Connell, James Berrien. Jeff Island, the grass expert. Guys, fire away some with some questions if you got them. I enjoy it. All right, so Chris Lane, of course, Bobby Lane's brother. He is uh, he's a phenomenal fisherman. Also, he's he's actually 
you know, came down a little bit. You know, he, he's had a year or two. Glad to see he's back in the Classic. He also is an area-style fisherman. When you're, If you're a Florida fisherman, you're typically an area-style fisherman because Florida guys typically get in an area and just milk it out. Uh, not saying he's not going to do well, but... Uh, not going to throw some Florida Florida guys a lot of love. Chris is going to, of, of course, Chris is going to do very well. Guys, if you if you are uh, enjoying this video or or any of my content, guys, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button because uh, I know YouTube is notorious about you know, denotifying people who maybe have notified. So I don't take any of the subscriptions. So, subscription subscribes that you guys do I, I i really do value when you guys uh click that button so i appreciate it share these videos if you like them got some instruction all right so here we go jordan lee my man is when it comes to big tournaments jordan lee is going to be for sure one of the top picks okay how can you not have a man who's in a short career he's won two classics back to back uh, you know, he's got four classic appearances. He's, he's moved to, he's around the Alabama area. <sighs> as bad as I hate to say it, I, I, I don't know. I, I think he's a, he's an area type, he's an area style fisherman. He just won Garcia in one little area. Uh, he won Conroe in an area. It, as you can see my pattern, guys, I'm not going with uh, area style fishermen because I feel this is going to be a pattern style tournament uh, just for that simple fact uh, Jordan but you know he's going to fare well for sure let's see up next I don't know why it's not loading loading up come on here we go up next is Brandon Lester okay Brandon I've gotten to talk to him a few times at some uh, certain places. Uh, he's he's kind of a sporadic uh, fisherman. Does well. He you know he's like a Brent Chapman, kind of up and down a lot. Uh, is he going to fare well? I mean, granted, he's from the Tennessee area. You know, he's going to have some good knowledge, some experience uh, through there. Uh, just because of his roller coaster career, I'm going to say it's going to be hard to pull off a win. Not saying you're not going to do well, Brandon, but, uh, you know, just going by past stats, roller coasters uh, typically won't, won't fare well. So, oh gosh, we got the uh, milkman, Jared Littner. Okay, this dude I've gotten to watch, you know, over the years, and he's pretty strong-headed. Even though he's from California, uh, my man knows how to... to uh, adjust in certain different places i'm gonna actually throw him some love jared i'm giving you some love on this one i'm gonna put you up in the top on that one if you don't know jared he's pretty strong we got a comment coming in he says will you see guys targeting largemouth versus smallmouth or do you think they'll catch both in the same area all right who said that uh i don't even know to see his name can't even throw you some love in there because I can't even see your name. But yes, I'm going to take a quick second and break it down like this. I think there is going to be some small mouths caught in the same areas as large mouth. Simply because of this. Small mouth tend to stay around clean water. And when you have a lake that is, is uh, really muddy, it's, it's got a lot of color to it, it forces all fish shallow. All of them shallow. So if they had a choice of clear versus uh, uh, of muddy, yeah, I could say the muddy water is going to be dominated with largemouth and the clear water is going to be smallmouth. But because we have that mixture uh, in this tournament, guys, I think both are going to play a factor. I don't think people are going to be able to target smallmouth, like say, I'm going to go out and fish nothing for but for smallmouth. I don't think that's going to happen. But... Uh, the smallmouth that are caught will be a surprise to them. And yes, they will play a factor just because they weigh heavy. Anytime you're catching a big 18-inch plus smallmouth, it's going to weigh heavy. 
Great question. Uh, so next we got Justin Lucas. Here we go. Angle of the year. How can you say a, a guy who went all year long and just proved himself and said, hey, I'm the best that there is in the year. Uh, Justin is fishing. Uh, he's done very well, uh, th of course, this past year. Strong. You, you, you can't say somebody who's won a previous angle of the year. They're not strong-headed. Got another. What, what, if you were there, great YouTube. Appreciate it. Jay Kent, he's asking what would I be throwing, and I'll get to that in just a second. Um, Justin Lucas, strong angler of the year. I've, I've been fortunate enough to win three titles. I've won three angler of the years. I won it back in 08, 11, and 12 on the FLW Tour. I know what it takes to win Angler of the Year. I've got three of them. Justin's has one. I don't see it being his only one. Justin is going to fare well in this tournament. Uh, he's a guy who can look around, fly on the pass, but you know, you take that Nico rig out of his hand, I he struggle a little bit. You know, my man is great with a spinning rod, great with electronics. Uh, I know he's going to fare well. I just think this is not going to fit in his wheelhouse to dominate so giving him a lot of love but i don't think he's going to be there let's see here who we got next oh my man aaron martins he's got 19 uh cup appearances he was actually ranked six this this dude right here is just nothing but consistency here he is coming up that rod you see right there it's always bent on this dude's boat now, does he catch big ones everywhere he goes? No, not necessarily. He's won, I think he's won at least two angle of the years, if not three. There's only been a few of us in both tours that's even got three angle of the years, and I think he's one of them. Uh, is he going to catch fish? And if you think about it, the last few March tournaments are, that I can remember, he's always figured out a way to catch them cranking. A, A. Martins, I'm giving you a lot of love. You're going to be one of my top picks for sure. Uh, whether you, you talk to the birds or the sky or talk to yourself, you'll be talking your way all the way through to the wind. So, Andy Montgomery, okay, we got a South Carolina stud right here. Uh, definitely going to be a contender, guys. Uh, Andy, Mor uh, Andy Montgomery is a chatterbait uh, fanatic. I don't know why my internet is stalling right here. But Andy Montgomery, I'm giving you love. You're going to make it. I know he's going to have a chatterbait in his hands. He's done well over on the MLF style, on the MLF side. Uh, here he is. If you don't know Andy, he's, he's a, a phenomenal fisherman, especially with a chatterbait in his hand. All right, we got Cliff Pace. Whew. Cliff is actually a former classic champion. I've got, I've been, I've talked to him quite a bit. Can you give me a water? Golly, I've been, blah, 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 blah. hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, classic appearances. Cliff Pace, you are, you know, you're going to be a contender, but Cliff actually likes areas. He likes to slow down, milk an area. I think this is going to be a tournament where people can cover a lot of water. They're going to be biting. So, Cliff, I'm not going to throw you as much love on this one just for the simple fact you like to keep your pace slow. Oh, that's pretty cool. Cliff Pace keeping the pace slow. I know Jay, I know Jacob Prosnick has got to be coming up here soon. Uh, Brandon Pollen it. All right. My man is ranked 8th this past year. Uh, Brandon is a phenomenal fisherman. He, I've actually seen his career, you know, he was really, on a, in the beginning of his career, a really bad roller coaster. Like up and down, up and down. Now my boy has steady, been on the climb. Great fisherman. Glad to see he's got a little bend in his hat. He ain't quite a flat brimmer. So I, I, I appreciate that, that you're putting the bend in your hat. But... Uh, Brandon is going to be, he's going to be a contender. Uh, he loves to crank. Uh, he's actually developed quite a few, uh, crankbaits over the time. 
over the years for Rapala, and, and you know, I'm gonna have to say, I'm gonna have to say he's gonna be a pretty strong contender. I don't think he's gonna come away with the win, but he's gonna be a strong one. Here we go, Garrett. I don't know who you are, but it looks like you made it through the Eastern points. Can't really talk about it. At least you got a bend in your hat right there. I appreciate that. Uh, throwing you some love. Looks like you got some spotted bad. I don't know nothing about you, but wish I could talk. Well, good luck in the tournament. Let's see here. Randy Pearson. Again, I don't know much about you. Looks like you qualified through the Bass Nation. I uh, wish I could talk more about you, but I can't. Let's see here. Who we got next? Oh, Cliff Perch. Here we go. California stud. If you don't know much about Cliff Perch, he is uh, a California or Arizona guy, you know, out west. Phenomenal with a spinning reel. Just my man can take and catch giants on a drop shot when I can't even begin to catch a, uh, a bass on a drop shot sometimes. But somehow, some way, my boy always figures out a way to catch him. Here you go. Here he is, just pulled up. I don't know why he started throwing the mop head in there. He used to be clean cut. Now he's got a chachia pet growing out of the top of his head. <laughs> love you, love you, Cliff Perch. But uh. My boy is a stud, and as you can see, he's spinning rod. Don't look for him to contend well, not because I don't want you to. I'm rooting for you. Don't look for you to do well on this one. Uh, Keith Poche, you know, you know my man has been around a lot of dirty water, okay? As you can see in this picture, he's been around a lot of dirty water his whole life. Uh, look for him to do a strong content, be a strong contender. But not, not necessarily at the top, not because I don't think you got the ability, but may not fit in your wheelhouse on this one. So Keith Poche, we got any questions come in? Oh, here comes my brother from another mother. So if you don't know it, me and Jacob used to travel together and phenomenal fisherman guys I, I i think in the last i don't know don't quote me on stats but something like he's been over on the bass when he switched from flw to bass masters he's been in the top 10 four out of the last five of the year uh my boy is just a phenomenal fisherman and the great thing about him he has no strength and what i mean by that if you put a spinning rod in his hand he's just as equal as he is with a flipping stick that's why he's consistently into the top 10 all the time. So I know he knows this lake. He's been there previous times before. Jacob is definitely in my top pick for, for the end of this video, for sure. I knew he was coming up. We were on the P's. Nick Ratliff, I have no clue, and that's why you are a college congrats on on winning your your however you got in there through the cla college classic uh looks like cam campbellsville university tigers fishing team so my oh man giving you a shout out wish i could talk more about you but be cool to see somebody come in there and win it let's see skeet reese we got 18 what's it is it? I'm gonna do a continue do another live stream. I might have changed the setting. Really? Crap. Is it still paused? You can tell them that you're gonna come back in like five minutes or something. But I don't even know if it's really bad. Is it? Alright, my son is telling me it's really bad right now. Is it is it not picked back up? No. I mean, it, just tell them, like, we'll be back in five minutes or something. You know, Why? We got to wait for it to load up? You no, know, I mean, I want to change the setting. I don't know if we should do that. I don't know if we do that. 
Really? Alright guys. Well then we'd, it'd be like two different posts if we did it that way. Are we on Ski Reese? Alright, while my son is trying to figure this out, I don't even know. Alright, now we're back. Alright, let's go. Was it doing alright in the beginning? Matt Robertson, first, you know, don't know much about you. Uh, you qualified through the team championship. Uh, wish I could talk more about you, but I don't know you. Dean Rojas, okay, so Dean is, shh, my man's got 15 classic appearances. He was actually ranked 10th last year. He's on an upward swing on, on fishing. Uh, Dean is an, he can adjust pretty quick. He, he's a, he's a guy who can go on the fly, change areas, change baits, do the same, you know, do a lot of different things. Dean, I look for, you know, could possibly do, uh, a good, a good finish, but typically he excels in clear water fisheries. So I look for him to do well, but maybe not at the top. We pick back up. Amazing. Bradley Royal. Roy. Bradley. This is this young guy right here. And I ain't saying he's he's that young anymore, but my man has come out on the scene at a young age. Rem reminded me a lot of me when I was young. Came out, uh, guns a blazing. Uh, I've seen him mature over the last few years. Uh, you know, he he's a, he's becoming more and more consistent and to see that type of growth, he's got a lot of, of uh, you know, he's got a lot of uh, going his way. I look for him to fare well, but to hold it together for three days, I, you know, I'm not looking for you to be at the very top, not because I don't love you. All right, we're going to Gerald. Gerald Spore. All right, my man, he's, you know, he was ranked eighth. Don't know much. He's he's fairly new on the scene. He was ranked twelfth. Uh, this was his first uh, appearance here, and you know, if I knew a little bit more about you, Gerald, he comes from Gonzales, Louisiana. You know, he's fair wells in shallow water fisheries, but the fisheries in Louisiana shallow versus a shallow sea area is a lot different. I don't know much about you than that. Uh, say good luck. Alright, next we're going to have Wesley Strader. Alright guys, I would be a fool to not put Wesley in there. Wesley, you know going to fare well. You know he's going to do good. And my boy is excellent at making uh, a decisions out on the water. He's excellent at adjusting. He's excellent at patterns. Uh, he's familiar with... He's familiar with the East Tennessee area. Uh, he's familiar with this lake. He's probably got a lot of winds on this lake. So to take Wesley and say, nah, Wesley, you ain't going to do nothing this tournament. You'd be a fool not to put my man up there. So Wesley is definitely going to be up there in the top picks for sure. If you don't have him up there, you, you just, you, you're kind of a little crazy. All right, here we go. We got Gerald Swindell, 17 classic appearances. He made it in on the 42nd uh, place. Gerald is a grinder, guys. I mean, my boy is just a grinder. Uh, and he's got some, ang I think he's got one angler of the year up underneath his belt. Uh, so you know he's got it mentally strong to know what it takes. He's a grinder. He, he, he's just going to figure out a way to catch bass. I don't care where it's at. And he's a guy who can adjust on the fly. But I don't know. Man, it's a tough pick for putting him in my top. He's going to fare well, guaranteed. He's going to end up cranking. I guarantee you a crankbait will be in his hand pretty much the whole time. So, Gerald, I'm giving you some strong love, but I'm not going to give you the top love. Here we go. Got uh, 
Frank Talley. Don't know nothing about you. Uh, that's why. Don't know much about you, but man, good luck. I hope you fare well in the tournament. Randall Tharp. All right, guys. Randall Tharp is just, he's strong, dude. He's strong-headed, strong, level-keeled. My man knows how to put a flipping stick in his hand. Uh, if the water was a lit, a smidgen cleaner, where he can just take that jig and go flipping down the bank in certain areas, I would have to go with him. And this is an odd picture of him. Why would you have a spinning rod? I don't even know. That's embarrassing. Come on, Randall. What do you got a spinning rod in your hand for? I mean, I know he's got a spinning rod. He, he's, I'm sure he's good with a spinning rod, but we kind of know Randall for the big stick. So I'm going to give him some love, but I just don't think there's clear enough water to where he can just go down the bank flipping a jig at some of these rock walls and, and cover enough water to do what. So I look for him to fare very well, but not not at the top, very top. All right, so now we got KVD, Kevin Van Dam. He's got four classic wins, 27 appearances, and he's he was ranked 14th last year. Hard not to go with my man who's got AOIs, he's got wins. We I don't even have to go on about him. So we know Kevin is a, a, a great fisherman. I've seen him make some adjustments in, in the classics in the past and head towards muddy water to go cranking. He's won some square, you know, it, those fish are up air on a square bill, I guarantee you, in this tournament. And we also know he's good with a spinner bait. But here lately, and when I say lately, over the last 10 years, he's been a square bill fanatic. So, Kevin, yeah. I mean, I'd be a fool not to. This is going to be coming up in your wheelhouse. So, Kevin, I look for you to do very well. I'm going to put you up there in my top picks for sure. Uh, this is still acting funny. It's better. All right, so now we got Brad Waitley. Uh, don't know much about you. You made it through the opens. Wish you luck. Not because I don't don't want to pull for you, but don't know nothing about you. Jacob Wheeler, hard working machine. I, I knew this kid before he actually came out on tour, and the first impression I got of him was he he was like a sponge. Like he would come around me and just start asking me questions, and it was just. When I talked to him, he was sponging up everything in a good way. You could tell he had the desire to to want to make it out here. And, you know, a lot of people, he's very confident. It's There's a difference in confidence and cockiness. My boy is very confident in who he is and his abilities. And it shows out on the water. And a lot of great fishermen that end up uh, making good careers out of this get mistaken for cockiness versus confidence my boy is just bleeds confidence he knows what his abilities are he knows his strengths he knows his weaknesses and he's going to fare well i mean my boy is is not strong in anything so jacob yeah absolutely is he going to be up in my top for sure jake whitaker uh you know he's this is his first time making it in. Uh, don't know much about you. Looks like you finished 22nd. You're you're new to me. Don't know much about you to talk about you, but good luck to you, man. First one. I hope you win it, man. That'd be cool. First time in, first time win. That would be. We got Jesse Wiggins. This dude's a this dude is a, a tough-minded guy. I, I've watched him. On the Cherokee lakes, he's going to know these lakes. He knows these lakes very well. Uh, I look for him to be one of my top picks. Uh, he's got open wins. He's got elite wins. You know, my man has come through. He was ranked 26 last year. You know he's put his time and effort in. Jesse is definitely going to be 
in some of my top picks. And the last one is... What did I say, last but not least? Chris Zaldane. Chris Zaldane, my man, finished 20th this past year. I don't look for him to fare very well. He is a uh, clear water, seems to be a clear water specialist. That don't ever mean that people can't catch him in mud. I hope all you guys that I didn't say would do well. I hope you prove me wrong, guys. I'm not for you or against you. I'm not just I'm just giving you my knee jerk reaction. Chris, you're clear water. You seem to excel in clear water. Uh, you're not going to be my top pick for this one, but I think you're gonna, you know, you're gonna you're gonna catch fish. I know you will. You're you're type of guy that likes to swing for the fences. Any questions? More questions coming there. Let's see here. All right, guys. I'm gonna read. David, what's up, Daniel Rodriguez? Yeah, you knew you'd be there. Jeff Hollins chiming in. Billy. Kenneth, Tim, what's up, Tim Outdoors, a lot of you guys, yes I am Charles, I'm taking donations, so if you guys don't know, I'm actually taking donations for the 5 Lure Challenge, so go back and, and look and surf around on my channel guys, hit me up, P private message me on Instagram, okay, if you're not a follower on Instagram, uh, what we've been doing is taking some donations for the uh, charity of choice, and we're doing it through PayPal, uh, PayPal. So if you guys hit me up on Instagram, uh, I'll respond to you. We'll do it through PayPal. I give you a shout out. Everybody that donates, I give you a shout out. Uh, we've actually had one guy come through uh, and donate three hundred dollars. Another guy come through and donate. I think the uh, charity went from 300 to we're probably close to $700 now. And, and these videos were recorded a lot earlier. But, so my top picks, guys. Ott Defoe, you gotta go with Ott Defoe. You gotta go with Wesley Schrader. And it's hard to go against KVD because you know the square bill is going to be a, a, a definite factor. Uh... You know, I threw a dark horse in there. Not that he's a dark horse, but it's Brent Chapman. Uh, he's a he's a cranking machine. You got Aaron Martins, Jacob Prosnick. He doesn't. He you know his strength is not necessarily one thing. Uh, Iconelli. Iconelli is a guy who he's all over the board, dude. He he we we whether you love him or hate him, he knows how to run patterns. He knows how to pick up on subtleties throughout the day and make those adjustments. Uh, I think this is what's going to happen in the lake. You can read me a couple of those if you want. This is what I think is going to happen in the lake. There's a lot of current happening in that lake right now, which can gang them up. Okay, Anytime you have current, it's going to position fish in tight places in small areas. So... Uh, the guys who are able to read current are going to be good players. And there's not a guy in this top, I don't know, 53 guys fishing this thing. There's not one guy that doesn't understand. They wouldn't be in the Classic if they didn't, okay? So there's going to be current spinnerbaits, chatterbaits, uh, bladed baits. They're just, you know, they're going to be a, pl uh, a player in, in these events. And uh, I don't know. That's going to be my top picks. Guys, if, if, if you do come to the Classic, I'll be there all three days. Uh, come hit me up. Come talk to me. I appreciate y'all guys taking the time to watch this video uh, on YouTube. And hopefully, next time I do this, we're going to try to make this an a ongoing thing where I kind of just intercede on some videos out there. What is, what is it that they call that? How, what is that? Where they intercede, whatever we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys liking, commenting, subscribing. You know that. For the guys who've already been on the channel, I uh, appreciate your love and support. You guys, go back. If you're not familiar with my channel, go back. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. we got a lot more fishing videos coming at you. I'm down here in Florida 
Just got through doing four more fishing videos that will be throwing at you here soon. I just got done at Lake Seminole. Uh, I didn't do well. Got my butt handed to me there. But I'm still producing the videos. If you want to learn how to deal with adversity, go back and watch the video. We're actually going to drop the link of day one of Seminole tomorrow, right? And my boy Mason, who does all my editing, is doing a phenomenal job. Giving, throwing some love to my boy. And 